So having seen how the a priori algorithm will discover all frequent pairs of items, let's look at how to extend this technique to triples, quadruples and so on. That is, let's see how to extend this technique for k tuples in general, where k is uh, perhaps greater than 2. So in the kth pass through the file, we are going to generate all frequent item sets of size k. And the approach that we will use will be a simple extension of the approach that we used for k equal to 2. So as we parse this file basket by basket, we will, so let's say we are looking at the second basket over here and let's say the second basket happens to have uh, n items. So how many possible subsets of size k are possible from these n items? Well, there are n c k possible subsets of uh, items that we can generate based on these n items. But we are not going to keep counts for all n c k of these subsets. We are going to keep count of only those subsets whose k minus 1 tuples were discovered to be frequent in the k in, in the k minus 1th pass. Okay, so if you look at an, let's say we look at a particular subset of items, i1 to ik, that's generated from these n items. So this is just one of the n c k subsets. For this particular subset, how many subsets of size k minus 1 are there? Well, we can decide to drop any one of the items from this k tuple to get a k minus 1 tuple. So there are k possible items we could drop and so we'll have k minus 1 sorry we'll have k different k minus 1 tuples that can be generated from these k items. In other words I'm asking the question how many subsets of this set are possible that are of size k minus 1. Well to create a subset of size k minus 1 we just have to drop one of the items in this set. Now in the k minus first pass we would have discovered all frequent item sets of size k minus 1. Now if any of these k minus 1 tuples of uh, or any of these subsets of size k minus 1 that are possible from this set of size k were not a frequent item set. Okay, that is, so let me write this down. If any subset of size k minus 1 was not ascertained to be a frequent item set in pass k minus 1, then by the property of monotonicity, it's clear that this set of size k cannot be a frequent item set either because it's a superset of that subset. So we'll just ignore we'll just ignore this set of size k okay, and move on to the next uh, subset of size k generated from this basket. But if all the subsets of size k minus 1 were ascertained to be frequent item sets in pass k minus 1, then we will maintain a count for this particular subset and then we'll just add 1 to the count. Um, in whatever implementation we are going with, the triangular matrix method or the hash map method. So this is the general approach that we are going to use in the kth pass. So that's what is depicted here in this figure. So we are having a sequence of passes. So this is the first pass where we start with all items. So we are keeping count of all items. And then at the end of the first pass, we just filter out those items that are ascertained to be frequent and those constitute the set L1. Recall that this set L1 was something we said was of size M 
and this uh, original set C1 was of size n. Now we take these m frequent items and then in the second pass we keep count of pairs that are uh, pairs of items such that both items in a pair are from this set L1. So we keep count of only those. Okay, so uh, we are going to keep count of only those pairs of items such that both items in the pair are from this set. So these are the candidate, uh, th these are the potential candidates for frequent pairs of items. And then at the end of the second pass, we'll filter out those pairs which actually exceed the support threshold. And we'll call those uh, pairs of items as the set L2. So these are the frequent pairs of item sets. So this is the frequent item set of size 1. This is the frequent item set of size 2. And then in the third pass, we will be looking at triples of items. But then we'll be looking only at, we'll be keeping count of only those triples such that all subsets of size 2 of a triple have been ascertained to be frequent pairs of item sets at the end of pass 2. So that is, uh, and again at the end of the third pass we will filter out those triples. Uh, we will choose those triples from this set C3 which are frequent, that is whose support exceeds the support threshold and so on. So you can see that we have k passes and at the end of k passes we would have discovered all frequent item sets of size 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on up to k. So this is just uh, an explanation of the notation in the fre previous figure. C1 was the set of all items which I mentioned was of size n. So these are all items in your store. L1 are only those items which are ascertained to be frequent at the end of pass 1. So L1 was of size M. Then C2 are all the possible candidate pairs that we are going to keep count of in the second pass such that both the elements of a pair appear in L1. That is both items in a pair have been ascertained to be frequent in pass 1. L2 are those filtered pairs out of C2 which we ascertain to be frequent at the end of pass 2 that is whose support ends up exceeding the support threshold and in general the set C sub k is the set of all k tuples such that all k minus 1 uh, all the subsets of size k minus 1 that can be generated from this set are in the set L sub k minus 1 and at the end of the kth pass we are going to choose only some of these k tuples which have a support higher than the support threshold so that set of k tuples is what we call as l sub k these are the actual frequent item sets of size k and we continue this until so how many passes do we need to make we need to make as many passes as so we stop at the point, we stop at the, so let's say we stop at the kth pass if there are no frequent item sets discovered which are of size k. So let's say at the end of the kth pass, we don't even discover a single frequent item set of size k. Then our algorithm will terminate. Why don't we need to move on to the next pass? Because if there are no frequent item sets of size k, there clearly cannot be any frequent item sets of size k plus 1, k plus 2 and so on. Again by the property of monotonicity. Because if every frequent item set of size k has a support less than s, then any superset will also have a support less than s. So we don't need to continue beyond that point. So to summarize, we have a single pass for each value of k starting from 1 and we need room in the main memory to count each candidate k tuple to keep track of 
so uh, the the number of counts that we will have will be proportional to c sub k if we are using the triangular matrix notation and if you are using the hash map notation then every time we discover a k tuple that we think we should keep count of based on the criteria that we just saw in the previous slide then we'll just add an entry in the hash map for that particular k2 so we just need to ensure that we have main memory uh, sufficiently large that we can keep track of all the counts and for typical market basket data in the real world our support threshold is going to be uh, one percent that means if any item or any pair of items or any triple of items appears in more than one percent of the baskets then it's going to be a frequent item set and what we see is that k equal to two is the pass the second pass is the one that requires the most memory because at the end we don't want too many frequent triples or quadruples because if we have that then we are going to have a huge number of frequent pairs so the association rules that will be generated from those pairs or triples or quadruples will be huge in number so to have a manage manageable number of association rules that we can act upon we have to ensure that most of our frequent item sets are going to be of size 2 so these are the uh, so these are the item sets which will require the most memory item sets of size 2 so that finishes with this topic of uh, association rules or frequent item sets there are other algorithms that uh, we we are not going to look at in this course but if you are interested you can browse later sections of chapter 6 from the book mining massive data sets by Jeff Fullman and Anand Rajaraman. Thank you.